Next, let us try to understand the graphs of polynomial functions. As we know, there are different types of polynomial functions depending on the degree of the polynomial. So you have linear quadratic cubic fourth degree so on fifth degree sixth degree so on. so as the degree of the polynomial increases the graph becomes more complicated so first let us try to get some basic idea of how the graphs of polynomials look like so first let us try to understand the linear graph so if you have y is equal to a linear function ax plus b we have a linear function y is equal to ax plus b. So the graph of this depends on the numbers a and b. For example, if you have y is equal to 2x plus 3, the easiest way to draw the linear curve, we know that the first degree polynomial has a graph which looks like a straight line. So the easiest way to draw this graph whenever you have a linear function is that first put x is equal to 0. Just try to get two points x and y. So put x is equal to 0 you see that you are getting y is equal to 3. And put y is equal to 0 you see that you get x is equal to minus 3 by 2. That is you found two points on this curve. The first is minus 3 by 2 comma 0. Let us say that this is minus 3 by 2 comma 0. And the other point is 0 comma 3, 0 comma 3, 0 comma p. So once you get two points on this curve, we know that this curve is a straight line and you get the graph like this. So in this way, it is very easy to draw the graph of y is equal to ax plus b. There is not much complication in this. So just get two points on the curve and join them with a straight line. So the easiest points are the points of intersection of the line and the axis. Next, the next easiest polynomial to draw is a quadratic polynomial. y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c. So the higher degree polynomials can be analyzed in two different ways. The first type of analysis is analysis using the zeros of the polynomial. And the second is analysis using maxima and minima. Maxima and minima. So analysis using zeros, analysis using maxima minimum. Sometimes we try to do both of this simultaneously. So let us take an example. So y is equal to x square minus 5x plus 6. Assume that you have to draw the graph of this quadratic polynomial. So the first way to analyze it is that by the process of zeros. That is if you try to find the zeros of this polynomial. Try to find the zeros of this polynomial. That is the values of x for which y is equal to 0. So you will know that y is equal to, if you factorize this, the so zeros can be easily found out if this can be factorized easily. So this is x minus 3 into x minus 2. So that means the zeros of this polynomial are 2 comma 3. So what is the meaning of zeros? Zeros are the points where the graph meets x-axis. So if you take the graph, so you have two points 2 and 3 on x-axis. So x square minus 5x plus 6 has two zeros 2 and 3. That means this graph cuts x-axis at two points. And next you can draw the graph of this 
using the fact that we know that the graph of a quadratic polynomial will be a parabola. So if you have two zeros, the graph can either be like this, a parabola or like this, passing through these two points. So which of this is right? Which of these two is right? So now we need to see the leading quotient. So the second thing that you need to observe is the leading coefficient. So what is the leading coefficient of a polynomial? Leading coefficient is the coefficient of the highest power of x. So if the highest power of x has a positive coefficient, we say that the leading coefficient is positive. If the highest power of x has a negative coefficient, we say that the polynomial has a negative leading coefficient. Now try to observe this. Does this have a positive leading coefficient or a negative leading coefficient? Clearly it has a positive leading coefficient. So if you have a positive leading coefficient, you start from top. If you have a negative leading coefficient, you start from the bottom. Because if you have a positive leading coefficient as x tends to infinity, y goes to infinity. If x is very large number, this y becomes a very large number. So as x goes very large, y goes very large, you start from the top. And if the leading coefficient is negative, you start from the bottom. So how does this graph look like? So this will be the graph of this function. So by this method, you can draw roughly graphs of quadratic functions. So first find the zeros of this polynomial. So you get the zeros and once you get the zeros, you know that those are the points where the graph cuts x-axis and you get two points. And once you get these points, you either have an upward parabola or a downward parabola. So you get upward parabola if the leading coefficient is positive. You get a downward parabola if the leading coefficient is negative. So this is how you draw the graph of y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c using the zeros of the polynomial. But sometimes finding zeros will be difficult. Sometimes the quadratic expression cannot be factorized nicely. So let us see what we can do in such cases.